Palestinian American Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib has been censured. 22 Democrats joined their Republican colleagues in the House to approve the reprimand against Tlaib for her criticism of Israel following Hamas's deadly attack on October 7th. On Monday, Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene introduced the resolution. Let's watch. Whereas Rashida Tlaib incited an illegal occupation at the United States Capitol complex on October 18th, 2023, which put members of Congress, their staffs and Capitol visitors in danger by shutting down elevators, stairwells and points of aggress while obstructing official business in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. New York Congressman Mike Lawler also denounced Tlaib. Take a look. My colleague, Representative Rashida Tlaib, has parroted the talking points and the message of Hamas, a terrorist organization whose sworn mission is the destruction of Israel and the eradication of the Jewish people. Israel is our strongest ally in the Middle East, a beacon of hope, peace, and liberty in the region. It is the only multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious democracy. It is not... Tlaib defended herself. I'm the only Palestinian American serving in Congress, Mr. Chair, and my perspective is needed here now more than ever. I will not be silenced, and I will not let you distort my words. Folks forget I'm from the city of Detroit, the most beautiful blackest city in the country where I learned to speak truth to power even if my voice shakes. Trying to bully or censor me won't work because this movement for a ceasefire is much bigger than one person. It's growing every single day. She received support from Ilhan Omar. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. It is glaring hypocrisy when you have Republicans on the other side of the aisle trying to create definitions and say Rashida wants to annihilate people when Max Miller himself went on TV and said we're turning Gaza into a parking lot and we want to annihilate Palestinians. Nobody condemned him on that side of the aisle. What is true here is that every single one of them has not acknowledged the fact that Palestinians are dying in the tens of thousands but we'll continue to say it is us who are not acknowledging humanity. Rashida will stand strong. Gentle ladies, and time has expired. The movement will continue for liberation until every single ladies, time has, expired. has the right Ge to live Gentlemen from Maryland is recognized. Thank you. Ilhan Omar, of course, was referring to the infamous moment from GOP Representative Max Miller. Has the, I don't even want to call it the Palestinian flag because... They're not a state, they're a territory that's about to probably get eviscerated and go away here shortly as we're going to turn that into a parking lot. Rashida and then Minority Speaker Hakeem Jeffries released a statement on the Rashida Tlaib matter saying, quote, echoing slogans that are widely understood as calling for the complete destruction of Israel, such as from the river to the sea, does not advance progress toward a two-state solution. Instead, it unacceptably risks further polarization, division, and incitement of violence. So there were um, 22 Democrats joining with uh, the Republicans to vote to censure Tlaib. Um, four Republicans voted against it. They were Ken Buck, Tom McClintock, John Duarte, and Thomas Massey. Yeah, and uh, the rest of them and 22 Democrats seem to be taking a very strong stand against freedom of speech and freedom to debate and have disagreements of opinion in Congress in a way that I think should be really chilling and troubling to the American public. I mean, can you imagine, of all the times, they, they accuse Rashida Tlaib of echoing um, terrorist talking points. Can you imagine if every time a Republican who was accused of echoing Putin's talking points had been censured by the House? I mean, censorship by the House has only been evoked 26 times. And if you think about all of the periods of American history we've gone through and all of the terrible things, the wars, the pogroms against our own people of various backgrounds in the United States of America, to think that all of the people who were complicit in those crimes, they didn't get censured. Rashida Tlaib, the only Palestinian American in Congress, got censured um, and was accused of um, illegally occupying, according to Marjorie Taylor Greene, the White House. Again, the the comparison here, the idea she's obviously doing it a bit tongue in cheek, saying that this is what you accused of as a, of as one six, but then to double down and say that we are going to characterize protests in a public place of like Congress 
as an illegal occupation. Uh, that's something that should be discouraged, that Congress members aren't allowed to speak freely and advocating for their causes. It, it has an enormous chilling effect. Yeah, I, I strongly agree with you um, on the, the point about like, let's be careful about making the, uh, using the talking points, that's some bad people's talking points, as a reason. I mean, that can be true, but it should not be used as a reason to do, to, to do, uh, to do censorship. And I don't know, it, Republicans should be very concerned about this being used against them for the exact reasons you mentioned. The liberal media, mainstream media, has constantly criticize Republicans for echoing the talking points of Russia and Vladimir Putin um, in cases where I think those talking points, you might not like it that that's Russia's standpoint, but that Russia is correct about the trajectory of the Ukraine war, for instance. And in fact, Ukraine itself is now admitting that Russia was correct about that. Zelensky's generals are telling him mm -hmm. that it's an unwinnable situation. Um, so it was, you were, you were being accused of, you know, being a puppet or echoing or being puppeted by some government for saying something that now is being widely recognized as true, even by the other side. So that that's a long way of saying that we sh certainly shouldn't censor talk along that line. And um, while I do, obviously, the House, it's not, it's not a First Amendment issue, with, because the House can set its own policies on who gets to speak when, where, and why, um, I do think you know, in a, a climate of free speech and open debate on these issues. I do not agree with a lot of what Rashida Tlaib has to say on this subject, but we should have vigorous debate on the topic at all times. She should be, be free to say it. You can then criticize her. I've criticized her a lot. That's how it should work. And trying to cut off debate or, you know, especially cordon her off for having said something um, offensive when so many people are saying offensive things. And that's fine. Congress should be raucous. It should be, there should be yelling and screaming. It should be an actual spirited debate. Um, this feels like a definite step in the wrong direction. Yeah. And I would extend those sentiments to Max Miller, who I think also should have the right to make genocidal statements or say that, you know, Palestine should be flattened into a parking lot. That's the point of debate. Now, the debate that is now not happening because our elected representatives chose instead to violate our most foundational American principles and censure the only Palestinian American in Congress um, is this. It turns out that the leading political party in Israel, the Likud party, has the following in their charter. The right of the Jewish people to a land of Israel is eternal and indisputable and is linked with the right of security and peace. Therefore, Judea and Samaria will not be handed to any foreign administration. Between the sea and the Jordan, there will only be Israeli sovereignty. Samaria and Judea is what they refer to Gaza and um, the West Bank as. So in the leading party, leading political party in Israel, they literally say in their charter, from the river to the sea, from the sea to Jordan, there will only be Israel, uh, Israeli sovereignty. Now, when Palestinians say that, they say, well, there can only, for, for Palestinians to be free, that means a genocide of Jewish people. Now, what we're seeing currently is an occupation and an apartheid conditions for uh, Palestinian people in the region. And in the charter, it says, yes, that is what we're doing. We absolutely believe that Jewish people should have uh, superior so sovereign rights in this region. Is that the implication that that means genocide or um, mass killing of Palestinians? Well, perhaps every accusation is a little bit of an admission here when we're looking through these statements. One other um, notable uh, reality that um, Abed uh, Ayyub uh, dug up on uh, the internet, he's a, um, uh, a national executive director at ADC, he pointed out that when you look at the ADL's own framing of what that phrase meant, uh, back in, uh, he took screen grabs of their website and found that back in May 3rd of 2022, the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, referred to the slogan as, quote, a slogan commonly featured in pro-Palestinian campaigns and chanted at demonstrations. Nowhere in the 2022 description is there a mention of anti-Semitism. On October 26, 2023, obviously after the events of October 7th, the position on the website was changed to include is an anti-Semitic slogan. So there really does seem to be a kind of a backdating and revisionist history that's going on here to characterize what has been a, apparently a longstanding chant among Palestinians for their substantive freedom in the region as anti-Semitic, even while at the same time, the leading political party in Israel is able to use that exact same language, but privileging Jewish rights in the region as opposed to Palestinian rights. And that is considered to be 
okay. So it's wrong when Israel does it, but it's okay when the pro-Palestinian activists do it. No, I think that, wait a minute. Palestinians are advocating for their freedom. The Israeli, char the Likud party, excuse me, charter specifically advocates for Jewish freedom Hamas to the exclusion, wait a minute, to the exclusion of everybody else's freedom. What Rashida Tlaib is being centered for is not being Hamas. They're saying she's parroting Hamas talking points insofar as she says from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free. Palestine must be free and Jewish people should have exclusive rights in this region are two very different kinds of statements. Right. I don't think she should be censored. Um, I don't, I can't look into the hearts of what every person means when they use that statement. And I hope the Palestinians get freedom and equal political representation and treatment. I'll just leave it there so we don't get into another shouting match. All right. Well, stick around. We'll have more rising for you right after this.